listening to Pipe Bomb Radio with your host, Felix Olmedo. Be the man! You gotta beat the man! Austin James. Hang on a second, fella. And Nate Milton. Can you dig it, dig it, sucker? Welcome, everybody, to Pipe Bomb Radio tonight. Uh, looks like I'll be running the controls solo tonight, but that's okay. The show must go on. And tonight, we can t- we actually are kicking off our tribute to Black History Month and having on our uh, many successful African-American stars on the show and to talk about them and let's just want to get to know them, you know, find out all about their career paths and so forth and where they're headed. I think it's going to be a lot of fun and definitely looking forward to the showdown to end all showdowns coming up in just about two weeks, uh, give or take or so. About about two weeks. I think it'll be about two weeks. We will have a showdown between the Berg and Austin. And (laughs) you guys are in for a treat, let me tell you. Nonetheless, as I mentioned, uh, some technical difficulties on on, uh, Nate's Nate's, uh, part and Austin as well. Although it might be a blessing with Austin not being wrong. Hmm. Anywho. Back to the back to the point itself. Uh, tonight, we are going to have on a gentleman by the name of Slick Wagner Brown, SWB, if you will. He is a independent wrestling star out of the East Coast, and good friends with our our, our former guest on the show, Pat Piper. <clears throat> From what I hear, they got some pretty interesting stories to share, and I'm looking forward to hearing all about it. So we won't waste too much more time. I'm going to go ahead and give uh, Mr. Brown here a call. And let's get this party rocking. In the meantime, bear with me just a second. to make sure. There we go. Make sure that uh, I'm dialing out the right number. Obviously, I always got to make sure because for some reason, every time I dial out, I either forget the one or I put the one in and it still doesn't work. So, you know, nobody said I was the most clever when it comes to the uh, the phone the phone systems on the show. But I do what I can. All righty, and away we go. Hello, is this Slick Wagner Brown? Speaking. How you doing, sir? This is Felix with Pipe Bomb Radio. How you been? Good, having a good, good day man. so far? Yeah, man, I'm doing good. How you guys doing? Well, I'm doing good. Unfortunately, as I, as we talked, you know, I was mentioning my uh, partner in crime. Uh, he is, unfortunately, not going to be able to make it, so I'm running solo. So instead of being fashionably late, he won't be able to join us. That's okay, though. The show will go on. That's and All right. it'll just be the two of us here. So I'm going to kick things off. First off, to give a shout-out to uh, a good friend of ours, uh, Pat Piper, for yes. helping me set this interview up. He yes. is a great guy, Got kind of kind of crazy, but in a good way. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but um, we'll, we'll start things off in the beginning, man, because I always like to know how everybody gets a different start in life, and when they find out at certain le- certain stages in their life, that they are, you know, they either get in, they fall in love with uh, professional wrestling or mm. they get a later start and, you know, they just find that, you know, it's something that they want to do. At what age did yeah. it work for you? I mean, what, what, at what age did you start watching wrestling? Who were some of your heroes growing up? Well, I, I was born in, in, in Jamaica, the West Indies, so. Oh, um, nice. We didn't, okay. Yeah, we we didn't have wrestling. And um, okay. so I came, I came to the U.S. when I was 10 and my, uh, my parents moved to Cambridge, Massachusetts, and my uh, my aunt. We lived with my aunt and uncle for a little bit, and they uh, they were fanatics, wrestling fanatics. So they would watch it, you know, religiously. And um, one time they were just going crazy in the living room, and you know I was curious, so I run in there to see what they were watching, what they were so excited about, and it was it was pro wrestling, 
And so mm-hmm. the first two characters that I ever saw on the TV screen uh, were Ultimate Warrior and Hulk Hogan when they were building their feud for WrestleMania six. So oh, is that, that awesome. that's six, right? Six. Yeah, that's six. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. That, that was six. Yeah. 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 So those are the two two guys I saw first, man. And uh, my favorite, my first favorite wrestler was was the Warrior Man when I was ten. So that was my my guy when I was ten years old. And then His you know, as time went, went insane, on, it wasn't it? Say it again. His intensity in that ring, or just overall, his personality was just so intense. Yeah, crazy. man. For 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 a kid, he had everything that kids gravitated to. He, he was colorful. He was energetic. Right? Uh, he looked like a comic book came to life. You know, so, <laughs> yes. Yeah. So you know, it was it was cool, man. He had he had the tassels. You know what I'm saying? The music. The music is like the face paint. And the music was like one of the 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 biggest like you know things that pulled you into his character was the music, man. He had. Yeah, that music that made you just want to go crazy. <laughs> you yeah. know, right? And it's also—I think it's also great music to work out to. What do you think? It, it is. It is. It, like I said, <laughs> it just makes you want to go crazy, man. So whether it's lifting weights or running as fast as you can or just tearing shit up, man, that's that's what it, that's what it does. <laughs> oh, agreed. Agreed. And mm. as you grew up, I mean, was it, what, did you try to pursue maybe uh, amateur wrestling in high school or? Or as you grew up, did you try to? How, where did you? At what age did you find out that you maybe wanted to actually do this as a career? Um, I, I I didn't know that was an option. You know, when I first started watching, it was just purely for entertainment purposes. Mm-hmm. And uh, when I was okay. in, um, there was no wrestling when I was in middle school. Um, okay. But then when I when I went to high school, they announced that they were going to start a uh, a wrestling club. Uh, in my junior year, my junior, my sophomore year, so I was the I was the first guy in the gym to sign up for wrestling, and uh, so nice. I did I did that for, for the next three years. Um, the next year, the next two years after my sophomore year, my junior and senior year, we were actual team, and uh, I, I became I was team captain. So there was like there was three team captains. I was one of them, and um, from there. One one of my best friends growing up is Bo Douglas. He he goes uh, he goes his name is Bo Douglas in wrestling today, and um, he found out about Kowalski School in Malden, Massachusetts, and told me about nice. it and asked if I wanted to check it out. And of course, I did. So we went to check out the school and we fell in love with it. And you know that's when we realized, you know, we we realized before that we wanted to be pro wrestlers, but that was the first opportunity we got to actually become pro pro wrestlers. Okay. And as you decided to, I mean, when you, so you got to actually meet Kirill Kowalski then? I did, yeah. I met, I met Kirill Kowalski. What was your first impression of this guy? Because he seemed really scary and really intimidating. Just by, I mean, just yeah. as, a, as a, if you were just to observe him, he had that strong personality and he was a scary character to watch on TV. I mean, what was your right, impression right. your first meeting him? Um, I didn't know. I knew the name Killer Kowalski. I didn't know, like, the history. I didn't, like, uh, watch any of his matches or anything like that. But I knew the name. Um, and when I met him, like, you know, he looked like the, the guy that you would see in the magazine or, or, or um uh, you know, like there was no YouTube back there or anything like that, so you couldn't like, sure. you know, there was no Google. You couldn't Google guys and YouTube guys, so the only thing, only place to get information was from each other and magazines. So um, when I met him, he was he was huge. You know, even when he was he was sitting in the chair, he would always sit in the chair facing the ring, and he was huge sitting in the chair. And when I shook his hand, his hand just like swallowed mine. So. He, he he was a big a big guy, very intimidating guy. His voice was intimidating, so you know he 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 was he was definitely appeared to be the villain that he was on TV until you got to know him. Okay, all right. And you're you're so you're involved, and you're 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 starting you're getting things started. 
Now you, yeah. you just fast forward a little bit to your first your, your first match, and got the butterflies going. I mean, or, or were you nervous? I mean, when you went, everybody says they're 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 not nervous. Until, they're nervous until they walk out the curtain, and then all the butterflies yeah. kind of go away. I mean, what was tell, take us back to your very first match? How how what were you thinking, and how are you feeling that day? My 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 very first uh, opportunity in front of an audience was. A, a battle royal, so I wasn't, you know, I was nervous, but I wasn't too nervous because I knew that it was, you know, it was a battle royal, so I didn't have to really, you know, remember anything or anything like that, you know what I mean? So I, I wasn't too mm-hmm. nervous, but just nervous to be in front of the people. I didn't want to look like a fool, you know what I mean? So like that was that was the sure. most the thing that was nerve wracking the most, and and you know, guys mess with you in the back and stuff, and tell you to stay away from certain guys because they're gonna they're gonna hurt you or whatever. And you know that's just you know the the fun of 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 uh, being a veteran a veteran and and communicating with with a rookie you know what I mean a lot of guys sure. uh, you know they 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 love that they love that those moments because it's fun they were once a rookie and it was done to them so when they become the vet they do it to the rookie you know what I mean so there was a lot of that and but I mean I shared the ring in my first match with guys like uh, Prince Albert. Um, eight, who is also A trained in WWE, and sure. mm-hmm. um, Steve Bradley, who was who was a, a, a tremendous talent. He passed away. Um, I'm trying to think who else was in there. A lot, a lot of guys on on the in, independent level that you know did a, did a lot of big things and were were well known guys um, in the New England area. Um, they didn't do anything in the majors, but you know they were they were big big names on the independents. You know, it's funny too with the independent level, and and it, it's I don't really know if I like to call it that, but I mean wrestling is still wrestling no matter how you look at it. Now, yeah. some people actually end up wanting to stay in in that level and be fine with it because you know what, they're having fun. They're not uh, constantly being watched and told that they can and can't do this, they can and can't do that, and that works right. for them. Now, right. getting into the wrestling business. Would you say that your ultimate goal would be to get to WWE one day, or maybe not so much there, or at least just to get you know to where you can be on television, maybe even with uh, TNA or Ring of Honor, or even go to Japan for a little bit? What are some of your aspirations that you want to see yourself doing? It was definitely WWE. I I, I grew up watching WWE, so of course you know as a kid I thought it would be cool to go from you know being a fan and watching on TV and to mm-hmm. actually wrestling for the company that I grew up watching. So it was definitely sure. WWE. I didn't, I didn't know much about uh, Japan and those other places until I got into the business. And, of mm-hmm. course, you know, uh, wrestling in Japan became a, a big goal, and I accomplished that. Wrestling in Japan is, is the best experience of my, of, my, of my career, you know, including wrestling for WWE. But Japan was just different. It was awesome. It was awesome. It was, it, you know, and that's was, the thing I hear from everybody that I go that goes down there. They offer you yeah. such an intense workout regimen and give you a whole new respect for the wrestling business. It's almost yeah. you know, some people never want to leave Japan because of that fact. They have so much fun out there, but it's brutal. You really right. have to be made, you know, of something really something you know, out there in order to to hang with these guys. You know what I mean? Well, it's for guys that are serious. You know, what I'm saying you're serious about what you do. So, I mean, when you're over there, it's wrestling 24 seven. You know, you're you're training, you're wrestling, you're watching uh, wrestling, so you mm-hmm. know it, it becomes a life a lifestyle. And as you continued on in, in your career, you 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 wrestled a lot of great guys and so forth, and you've obviously worked with Killer Kowalski, God rest his soul. Have yeah. you? What's some of the best advice that you've received? It doesn't necessarily have to be from Killer Kowalski. It could be from anybody. Uh, whether it be a, a legend or even one of your pals that are in the business, that's kind of yeah. stuck with you throughout your wrestling career so far. What's some of the best advice that you were given? Uh, just, you know, um, the golden rule came up often, man. Just treat people how you'd like to be treated. Um, uh, you know, uh, be a man, man of your word. Like, you know what I'm saying? A lot of things we do on the indies is, is word-based, you know. Uh, mm-hmm. You tell the promoter you're gonna be there. You be there. You know, what I'm saying no matter what, and honor honor your booking. So like if you if you uh, take a booking, you um, you honor that booking, even if a better booking comes along. But 
Mm-hmm. I've known many guys in, in the game that uh, didn't go by that rule, and, and you know they've achieved a lot of success. So um, it's it's purely individual based. You know what works for one person may not work for another. Very true. So, Very true. Um, I just think just uh, if I was to give advice, you mean to like someone who is who is uh, fresh in the game mm-hmm. or. Not, not, not uh, necessarily that. Actually, that could be the second half of the question. It was more yeah. so um, what advice maybe a, a, a wrestling legend might have given you that you've come across that you've met in your time in the, in the, in the business or even yeah. uh, one of your friends that, that, you know, some advice that somebody else had given you that's kind of stuck with you. Just those, those and things. Of course, and then, what you would tell others as well. Yeah, those things. And Killer, Killer would always say, uh, you know, make the people notice you. You know what I mean? Um, what we do is entertainment, but um, we use wrestling to do it. And um, he says, you know, uh, make people believe what you do and that they came to see uh, they When they go to a, when they leave a show, they say to themselves or, or their peers that I saw six wrestling matches tonight and I saw one fight. He would always, always say that. So what he means by that is that, you know, what they saw when you were in there, they believe. So, mm-hmm. like, you can't make people believe that wrestling is real, but you can make them believe that you're real. And that true. always that always stuck with me. That's some good advice. I like that. I like yeah. that. And I got, I, I, it wouldn't be complete if I can't touch on a, maybe some stories that you have with Pat he said you guys have had some interesting little. Uh, uh, you guys have a little, a little bit of interesting history in the wrestling business, and uh, if you're up for it, if you have uh, some 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 stories you might want to share about you guys, uh, you guys working together in the wrestling industry. I am the worst with stories. You can ask Bo. I am terrible. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know. I, like I don't know what I had for breakfast yesterday, but uh, it's. It's uh, I, I met Pat in NECW, um, a while, you know, a few years back, um, mm-hmm. and you know he he's always been a good a good guy. He was doing the, the Roddy Piper character, and you know he did it very well. And and, and I I thought he could do you know go far with it because it was it was like spot on. You know what I mean? Um, I always yeah. found it entertaining, and he was a cool dude in the back. So you know, in front of the camera and behind the camera, he was a good dude. And, um, you know, uh, he, he, like I said, he recently reached out to me about doing this interview with you guys, and I thought that was pretty cool because we haven't spoken in a little while, and you know, um, he 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 still did that. So I, you know, um, Pat's a good guy, and you know that that just and you can be you can it. be honest too in a sense too that Pat is the biggest shit talker you'll ever meet in your life. No, I'm kidding. No, if he is, well, that's cool. But I mean, <laughs> but uh, no, as far as Pat, you know, he yeah, he, he he's a character. He's a character and a half. And yeah. I know when I had him on the show, uh, la- uh, I would say last summer, as we did a Roddy Piper tribute, he told yeah. he told the story about how he met Roddy and how it all came yeah. about uh, working with uh, working in the WWE for that little the little run that he had. Yeah. And yeah, he. <laughs> He yeah. Let's just say Pat can cut a promo with the best of them. He's pretty in, in, pretty funny and uh, entertaining, yeah. and definitely without a doubt the biggest shit talker you'll ever meet. But yeah. all in good fun. What? 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 Because he knows he knows it's true though. So. <laughs> what? What fun would it be without without the trash talking? Right. Right. You got you got to have the trash talking. <laughs> But um, we're going to switch uh, switch gears a little bit. And I mentioned that, obviously, when we talked uh, privately on the phone, talk about WWE. You follow, you follow um, the shows and so forth. Uh, do you follow just WWE or do you follow, like, uh, maybe some of the indie circuits, uh, Ring of Honor, TNA, uh, Pro Wrestling, Gorilla, New Japan? Do you follow it all? Do you follow only certain shows? Yeah, I, I I I try to keep up with what's going on, man. I watch I watch everything. You know, uh, guys will say, "Hey, man, check this out, check that out." You know, mm-hmm. I, I you know I have them send me a link, and I definitely do. But my favorite thing right now is is uh, you know New Japan, and of course I still nice. watch WWE, and uh, 
uh, Lucha Underground, you know. Um, I don't agree with yes. everything they do, but um, a lot of the things they do are, are, are done very well. And uh, you can you can see that because, you know, even companies like WWE has, you know, try to uh, imitate some of the things that they, that they do. So they're definitely doing their thing. Okay. 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 And with that, I've got to ask, of course, uh, I'm going to put you on the spot. You're going to be the booker. WrestleMania mm-hmm. is right around the corner. Yeah. Name, I would love for you to, and you can name stars currently on the roster or even past and maybe mix it up a little bit. You book your fantasy WrestleMania. Three matches yeah. that you book, including including your dream match. Who would you go with? WrestleMania 32 is they want it to be the biggest WrestleMania in history. They're going for 100,000 people. They want to fill up that Texas stadium. So WrestleMania as a brand has X amount of followers. They're going to get X amount of people no matter what because WrestleMania is an established brand. But that number is not 100,000. So they need a main event that's going to draw 100,000 people. In my and opinion, what in your opinion would that be? If I was in charge and I was making the the main event match, for me it would it would be Goldberg versus Brock Lesnar. And why is that? You don't mind me asking. Because they've done a good such a good job building up Brock Lesnar as a monster. Sure. Um, a lot of the people that he faces now, it's not believable that they would beat him. So good point. Um, I think Goldberg poses a threat to him, and okay. he's and they have a history. Yeah, so, it, it's it, I, in my opinion, it would it would definitely draw ratings, and I think people would come out to see that, especially okay. if the build was done right. All right. So you got the main event booked. What yeah. are some of the other two matches you'd like to see happen at WrestleMania? Uh, I would, I would bring, I would have AJ Styles on the card, okay, and because he's the hot, hot, hot new sign talent, and he was the hottest free agent in wrestling, and sure. I, I think I would bring up Samoa Joe from NXT, and I would put them in a in a program because I know that they'll deliver. Mm-hmm. I know if if for if nothing else, if, if if say WrestleMania bombed and it was no good matches, I know those guys will have a good match. And I think people would be interested in seeing that and they have a history as well. And people know that when those guys get in the ring together, it's 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 magic. So they could definitely use that at WrestleMania. Okay. All right. I like that. Two, two for two there. And and one more match that you'd like to see, and then we'll go with your dream match after that. One more match. Okay. Um, I'm going to have to go with the ladies now. So, okay. Um, Got to mix it up a little bit. I would, uh, I would try to get uh, Trish Stratus back and um, okay. see if she would do one more match. Have have Lita be the referee and uh, put her one of the, one of the uh, one of the young girls. What, one of, one of the girls I'd like to see them push is um, uh, Alicia Fox. I think she's talented. I think uh, I think they haven't done much with her. Uh, I know she was champion before, but um, mm-hmm. I think they can do a lot more with her. I think if they were to build her up right and put her in there with Trish Stratus, and she was you know she beats Trish, she would have credibility and she could be a big star for them. Okay. Okay. Now we're going to look the lights on and bright and you see it on the, the, the WrestleMania, uh, what do you call it? Where you can see your name up in, in the light, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Okay. We're seeing Slick Wagner Brown versus mm-hmm. who? at WrestleMania. He's walking that aisle and he's going to have a match against who? Shawn Michaels. Interesting choice. Yeah. That's a very popular choice too. Yeah, I mean, if, if guys that? around, 
if guys are around my age, it would be because you know um, Warrior was my first my first favorite wrestler as a kid, and then my next my next favorite wrestler as a kid was you know as soon as I hit like like my teenage years, like twelve, thirteen years old, was Shawn Michaels. So it would it would be nice to you know uh, be at WrestleMania and wrestle you know someone that I looked up to when I was a kid. Interesting choice. That's a very interesting choice. Now, yeah. you, 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 we have obviously WrestleMania. They have a, a such slew of activities that go on there. Mm. One of them is probably without that one of the more popular attractions, of course, and that being the Hall of Fame, where they bring some of the old timers back, the legends. Yeah, come back for one, one more, one you know, get to to be remembered for the the contributions they've made, and it being that they're in Dallas, this is another topic we talked about uh, privately, of course, and. Mm. It, it would just seem obvious and a must to include a particular group in. But um, yeah. if you were to name three people, as far as three groups or, or people individually that you would like to see in the Hall of Fame or even headline this year, who would you like to see in the Hall of Fame? Well, they're in Texas, so they got to put in the Freebirds. Those guys were huge in, in, in that territory. Um, um Two more, two more. Now, I haven't really thought about this, but uh, I'm trying to think <laughs> who else they that they haven't put in that they could they could put in. Um, True. They put in a female every year now, it seems. So they put in yeah. a celebrity, which I think is kind of silly, but I get it. I mean, but out of Shoot, all I don't even that know, I, I don't even know what been around, you know. I don't even know what what celebrity they have. They have. Uh, they. Did they put in Owen Hart yet? No, not yet. And that not has yet. mostly to do with, uh, with 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 his with his uh, his widow Martha. Martha. Yeah, yeah, the same the same yeah, struggle yeah, that they yeah. had with the macho with the macho man. But well, they they they, you know, they the just, they just released that, a deep... Randy's family. Yeah, Randy's family allowed it allowed him to be put in, whereas uh, right. Owen's widow has still a grudge against the WWE. But I mean, but about. Randy's family, Randy's family fought fought that for a little while too. That's what I'm saying. Yes, they but, did. You're right. Um, I I think they just released a DVD with Owen, so I I would see Owen going. It's not this year, the next okay. year, but I I would I would put in I would put in Owen in, in the Hall of Fame. I think I think that that would okay. be cool. Um, and then would you put in a celebrity or would you put in another female? And if so, which female would that be? I would put in a female man. I. I Despite the fact that, you know, the WWE may not agree with what she did when she left the WWE, she had mm-hmm. such a big impact in the WWE and on just girls in general, just from being able to perform on, on such a, a huge platform. I, I would put in China, and, and she's a she's a former Kowalski trainee, too, so I would, I would put in China. She is. Yeah. Good choice. Good choice. Very yeah. deserving. Bygones be yes. bygones. Got yes. to be remembered for what she did do. Exactly. I mean, uh, the the way she the way she left the company, like the whole thing that happened. Um, I mean, she was in a position where she had to she had to survive, so she did what she had to do to survive, man. At the end of the day, that's basically the you know way what I'm saying. That's, yeah. that, that's what it is. You know what I'm saying? You may not agree with it, but as as humans, we're survivors by nature, so we're gonna do what we gotta do to survive. You know what I mean? So we, we I can't. Know, I totally get you. Yeah, it's not it's not it's not fair to hold that against somebody. So I I would definitely put her in. You know, what she does doesn't 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 reflect on the back on the WWE. WWE didn't do it; she did it. So. She's the one that's held accountable for her actions. No one else. Of course. Of course. Yeah. And with that, if you were to if you were to meet a young man or a young lady and they said, Look, Mr. Brown, I'm thinking about getting into the wrestling business. Mm-hmm. What advice would you give them? Starting fresh, of course, they're new, these are you know, as green as green can be. What would you tell them? Yeah. I would tell them that <clears throat> In order to be successful in the wrestling business, you have to love the wrestling business. You have to love wrestling. You have to have a passion for it. Um, a lot of people do it that don't have that, but 
they don't last long. So you have to have a passion for 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 this business, and you know, just don't confuse being humble for being confident. You can be humble, but you got to be confident. And, and uh, MVP once told me, "Squeaky wheel gets the grease," and that's the truest thing ever. So people love to you know scream about being humble, but you know, humble means you 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 don't you don't speak. You're quiet, and you're always like you know shy, almost shy about things. You, you gotta be, you gotta be. You know, what I'm saying people gotta hear you. If people don't hear you, they they don't see you. They don't even know you're there. So, you know, be humble, but be be confident. You know, um, be of course be respectful. You know, what I'm saying listen, especially when you're when you're when you're you're a rookie, you're green. Listen, most importantly, um, and don't be afraid to step out of your comfort zone. You know. If you want to build a name in this business, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta hustle. So you gotta get in your car and you gotta drive and you gotta do things that you don't want to do, like you know what I'm saying, drive hours upon hours, come home at you know crack of dawn and then get two hours or an hour and then go do what you gotta do to to feed your family. You know what I mean? While you chase your dreams. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's that's what you gotta do, man. And um, Train. Training never gets old. That's how you. That's how you stay crisp. That's how you stay in shape. That's how you stay hungry. So a lot of guys they start doing shows and they start slacking on training, but you know what I'm saying there's no room for that. If you want to be the best at what you do. Now, if wrestling fans that uh, follow your career want to keep up with you on, on social media, what's the yeah. best way they can do that? Uh, Twitter. This is SWB. I'm on Instagram, SWB for real, the number four. And uh, I'm on Facebook. And uh, I have a website, SWB number four real dot com. And what are some upcoming shows you're going to be at next? Um, I've got RPW in Palmer, Mass. Uh, on February 27th, that's going to be against um, Sean Carr. He's from upstate New York. Uh, we used to share a locker room in 2CW. Um, in March, I've got Big Time Wrestling. They've got a, a show in Lynn, Mass. Um, another one, that's on the 4th of March. Um, no idea who I'm wrestling that night. Not right now, anyway. And um, the 18th, they're in Altoona, PA, at the Shrine Auditorium. That's a nice venue. Um, I'm debuting for XWA in Rhode Island. Uh, um, is that? I think that's March. That's March 19th, I believe. Uh, and that's in Warwick, Rhode Island. I'm not sure, but you can confirm that information on my website. Um, what else is going on in March? I've got NECW on March 5th in uh, Wakefield, Massachusetts. I'm not sure who my opponent will be that night either right now. Um, okay. I've got uh, PVP. Uh, might be on the same night as NECW. I'm trying to work on the details details now, so uh, there might be a double on that night. And, you know, some other stuff that you can check out on my, on my website as well. Uh, I can't, off the top of my head, that's what I can remember right now. That's in the, the okay. Industry, you know. All right. Not a problem. And as we go ahead and bring this to a close, you know, I just want to say, uh, again, a big shout out to Pat for setting this up and I appreciate yes. you making time for us tonight. I know you're on the East Coast, so I'm not going to keep you up too much later. And yes. as things happen and we, you know, as time goes on, we'll definitely uh, throw you a shout out, see about having you come back sometime in the near future and do a part Abs- two again. Absolutely. And maybe, this yep. time, maybe this time we'll have my, my tag team partners here. <laughs> Yeah, and who knows? Yeah. Maybe Pat will drop in and say, "Hey, but I know yeah, you're busy right I now." Yeah, well, so. I thought Pat was going to call in tonight. Oh, uh, you know, I, I, you know, he, his schedule may not have allowed it. And that's cool. Yeah, you know, yeah. You know, we'll, we'll catch him next time. But, yeah. Um, I I do appreciate you making time to come on, and I hope you have a great night. And best of luck to you in your in your career. And we'll be in touch again real soon. All right, Felix. I appreciate it, man. Let me know when this goes up, and I'll share it. You got it. All right. Have a good night, man. You too, man. Thank you.
All right. Bye bye. But <clears throat> there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Slick Wagner Brown talking about his career in professional wrestling, working with some of the greats. Phil Kowalski is not somebody that's you know just some slouch that's been around. He he's taught he's, he's taught some of the greats that have come and gone. Obviously, you mentioned that you know obviously Mr. Wagner mentioned that uh, oh Mr. Wagner excuse me Mr. Brown or SWB whatever you want to call it mentioned uh, Killer training uh, Kowalski training uh, China trained obviously Triple H and he's just an intimidating guy. So you know you had to you had to have a special kind of thick skin to be able to work with somebody who's old school and going to keep it real with you whether you want to hear it or not. Great, great young man. Wish him the very best in all his uh, ventures in life. And I think this is a good interview. I think you know, we had some good time here putting him on the spot. You know, hopefully I didn't make him too nervous. And other than that, you know, we got uh, we got somebody special coming in. There was one particular question I should have asked, and I totally forgot it. You know, you have those moments where you're interviewing people, and you get all the questions that you want to ask them, and all of a sudden you get them off the phone, and you're like, oh, Maybe I should have asked him this. Ugh, frustrates the hell out of me. Anyways, guys, I'm not sure if we're going to be on too too long tonight. We'll touch a little bit on Monday Night Raw and uh, in the upcoming Fast Lane. Obviously, with the return of Brock Lesnar, he, he made his appearance very well, very well uh, noted on the show as the triple threat match between uh, Brock Lesnar. Uh, Roman Reigns and Dean Ambrose, you know, and then, of course, the authority trying to weasel their way in and cause some kind of animosity between the three of them. I mean, there's no love loss between the three, obviously. But don't insult our intelligence saying this is the first time two brothers are ever having to go in the ring and face each other. They're not real brothers. Wink, wink. And let us not forget, of course, Bret Hart, Owen Hart, and, of course, that wink, wink, Kane and The Undertaker. But, um, Nonetheless, the show was was a good show. It was a it was a solid show, and I think as far as getting things ready for Fast Lane, it looks like it could happen. Maybe some some interesting matches could be set up, and with the recent uh, release of uh, TNA Knockout, Awesome Kong, speculation is that um, she could be maybe venturing back to WWE. But what if the opportunity presented itself, guys? What would you guys think in seeing if built? Obviously, you got to have the build up, got to have the match, and the participants, of course, will put in uh, Awesome Kong, Karma, Kia, however you want to know her, taking on the ninth wonder of the world, China. China's always talked about having one more match. And for her to come back out of retirement for one more match, it would, it's, it's, it would be huge because many people respect her, look up to her, admire her, and what she did for the company, for the wrestling business in its entirety, for women in wrestling. She was one of them, few that came through and just made her mark. And to work with, put these two big powerhouses together, that's money. I really believe that. And, you know, it's just a shame that it couldn't be a WrestleMania match because that would be a headlining match. I really believe that. But if done correctly, would you guys want to see a match like that? I don't know. I sure would. But, you know, I'm biased. And I, 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 I'm, I respect both women. I've had, we obviously had Kong on the show, and she was incredible. And, of course, my relationship, my, and my association with China, I work, I, do, I, I work with her and her manager, so I'm a little biased. So I'm obviously going to choose uh, to want to see my friends go and have a great match. Also, guys, if, since we last talked, it was brought to our attention through social media that WWE Hall of Famer, wrestling legend, icon, Canadian hero, Brett the Hitman Hart, the best there is, the best there was, and the best there ever will be, announced through his social media that he had been diagnosed with prostate cancer. And, you know, that takes a lot of strength to come out and admit something like that because those kinds of things you don't really want to broadcast. It seems like everything is broadcast over social media. You know, he took he, he took a huge step. And the outpouring of love and support he's been getting from all over the world. And the same can be said for 
or Brett's brother Smith. He's not forgotten because Smith announced as well that he is also diagnosed with uh, prostate cancer. Both men are doing okay. They're they're both brave because cancer is is it's a killer. You know, you, you go through these kind of things and you, not many people survive. And the outpouring of love for the Hart family because they're just they're looked at like royalty. I mean, it's it's true. Thinking about uh, when uh, Ahmed Johnson was back on the show uh, a couple of years ago, and how we brought up Julie Hart, and he, you know, his words rang ring true to me every time I hear the Hart family, because in reality they are like a royalty, wrestling royalty, which are the things that they've done in their lives, and the amount of talent that's come out of that family. You know, it, it, we wish them well. You know, that I, I'm definitely uh, sending best wishes to to my pal Julie and her kids. And I know Brett will come out of this. He's one one of the toughest people you'll ever meet, one of the nicest, most humble people you'll ever meet. I've had the pleasure of watching him grow up and, and, and wrestle and perform like nobody else. I've gotten to meet – I met him in 2005 at uh, RVD's comic, sh- comic book store, store – hello – comic book store. Uh, WrestleMania 21 weekend with my pals Frank and Chris and I was blessed enough to have him come on the show we had him as a guest he kicked off 2015 for us in a huge way he don't do very many podcasts you know he's very pick and choosy about what he does and what he interviews with so the fact he gave us the, our, our own little platform to ask him anything it, it speaks volumes and we are forever indebted to him for that. But, you know, of course, the same can be said with Smith. Smith was on the show last year as well. Two great men. We wish him the very best. And as far as next week's show, we do have two individuals that we're trying to figure out which is going to come on which, but we have Ring of Honor star coming to the show. Also a... um, Oh, let me think here. I believe it was an ECW star. Names will be revealed later in the week, but they are coming to the show. And for the showdown uh, between Austin and the Bird, we will have a special guest, special guest judge. Who will that be? Well, let's just say you don't want to miss it because that is going to be an entertaining show unlike no other. But um, like I said, guys, it's just me running the show tonight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and and, and end the show at this point because there's no reason for me to keep talking. It's always better to have somebody to kind of help you run the ship. So I'm going to go ahead and end things. We should be able to have Austin possibly and the Berg make an appearance next week as they will have some final words before their showdown final promo uh, words, if you will, along with our guest, And as we approach Fastlane, we'll we'll have our thoughts and and opinions and so forth, and Nate will be back. It'll be a great show. But as of now, I'm going to go ahead and say on behalf of all of us here at Pipe Bomb Radio, we want to thank, of course, Slick Wag the Brown for coming on. And end with saying, of course, keep your feet on the ground and keep reaching for the stars. Good night, everybody. Talk to you all next week.